Welcome to Softcore History. Hello and welcome to Softcore History. My name is Jake Goldman. I'm so happy to be back here in this host seat. I am joined as always by my co-host, Dan Regester. Who you hate. Whoa, 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 hold on. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hold on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's, let's give it a beat here, bud. You just got to give it a beat when you intro the show. Okay. All right. That's anyway. all I said. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And this is my other co-host, Rob Fox. How's it going, Rob? That's perfect. That's textbook right there. I'm very good. <laughs> you hear that? How? Okay. How are you? We gave this we gave this bit too much of a beat. Yeah, no, this doesn't seem like a bit though. It seems like you're this just how genuine Dan wants feelings. It. I don't truly care either way. I mm-hmm. just like stirring the pot between you two. I was just trying to stir the pot earlier because you two were both sick this weekend. I, I you guys are baby. Dan back claims he uh, cured his own Crohn's <laughs> simply by believing in himself. Yeah. yeah. You uh, rising and grinding. The the cure to the Crohn's is actually just the secret. Mm -hmm. It's positive attraction reinforcement. Yes. Yeah. Dan was like, I've never been. We were like, yeah, yeah, we're both sick this weekend. Dan's like, I've been sick in like ten years. And we were like, you've Crohn's. You're sick in perpetuity. Nope. Remission, bitch. Yeah. No, I think you're. Do they even is Crohn's a disease that they call like they they can claim you're in remission for? Is that like uh, one of those ones that there is like remission for Crohn's? Yes. Okay. But uh. I mean, the reason why is because I have an autoimmune disease that is the opposite of what you would think. Like AIDS, obviously. <laughs> you have an autoimmune say, disorder. Yes. So, so where, where, AIDS. where AIDS has uh, like a lack of white blood cells, I have too many white blood cells. So they it's all about that white other. power in Dan's bod. Yeah. yeah. They attack each other. Yeah. And they get confused. So, so you that's, a, you that's what a, inflammation is. It's like Gangs of New York in your veins right now. Yes. You do have a form of My AIDS. My gut. <laughs> Not a form of AIDS. Yeah. Autoimmune disorders. Doesn't make it AIDS. A, you know, this is actually a conversation. It's we've reverse had. AIDS. You, I, we've had this conversation with another friend of ours yeah, that also yeah. has has an autoimmune disorder, yeah. and he gets very upset when we tell him he has AIDS for good reason. No, it's just because like it's just a misrepresentation of what it is. Because like it's too many white blood cells. I I think if anything, we've misrepresented what you have until now. Yeah, the Pete Davidson. Mm. What? He also has Crohn's. Okay. Oh, does he? Yeah. Pete Davidson looks like a guy that has Crohn's. You don't the, look like a guy that has Crohn's. Right. Pete Davidson looks I, like I, a guy that has I, Crohn's. I am cured of Crohn's disease. Right. And you don't look like it. Pete Davidson looks like he has jaundice as well. He the looks like he has a lot. Of, yeah, yeah. He's got he's got a lot going on. Not he has a lot not going on for him, but also going on for him. He's an enigma. He jaundice. Pete Davidson looks like he has like eight old timey diseases, like scurvy. Like he's been on a ship too long without limes. Yeah. Yeah. I, so speaking of scurvy, I, I think I mentioned this. I had like chest congestion. They're like, Oh, it's, it's pleuritic. There's something like that, which is pleurisy, which is an old timey disease. Okay. People don't get pleurisy anymore. I don't know what that is. It's just like congestion of the lungs. It's like bad lung. It's like floppy lung. Floppy. <laughs> so you brought in the plague. Thanks. No, it's not plague. Mm, sounds like plague. pleurisy. Hmm. But it's like, when they said that, I was like, it's essentially like being diagnosed with scurvy. It's like, how the fuck do I have that? I didn't really have that, but they were like, it sounds like it. People still get the plague sometimes. It's true. Deer have it. You can get, uh, I mean, bubonic plagues everywhere. Yeah. Actually, you know what the number one, uh, what they think the main reservoir for COVID in North America is going to be from now on? Fucking deer. It's going to keep, when it pops back up, it'll start in deer. Cause like, I mean, that makes sense. A shit ton of deer have COVID. I would have guessed woodpeckers. Woodpeckers, yeah. I would have guessed big woodpeckers. woodpecker disease. Yeah, yeah big, big uh, annoying bird disorder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I um, birds per- been around forever. I, dinosaurs. I, I immediately thought you were going to just say Floridians because that that checked out for me. Uh, no, no. Would we turn this into political? No podcast. No, I'm not. not I went says. to. I went fucking f- lib ass cuck. I went to Florida and man, it's wide open. They don't give a fuck down there. They don't what care here. Been here. Oh, it's worse than Florida. Like I'll How tell you, it it's be not any less than here. It's not though. I took a fucking Lyft or a Uber actually in Florida, and they didn't say anything because I wasn't wearing the mask. But they reported me, and that now I'm banned from Uber. Oh wait, seriously? I can only use Lyft now because I didn't wear a mask in the Uber. That's so crazy because when I got, I went to Gainesville, in Florida. I, that's crazy because in Gainesville, when I took a, a Lyft downtown, 
I got in with the mask and the lady's like, I'm not one of those freaks that needs a mask to ride with you. And I'm like, all right, cool. And I oh, took like I, was, oh, dude, I had I've a had, mask. I've had someone here, uh, Uber driver here be like, you don't need to wear that. That was the first time anyone told me not was, to wear it. That was most of the fucking Uber drivers in Florida. They're like, yeah. you don't need that. But I brought it just in case. I just did. I got to the point where I didn't wear it for one Uber because I got so used to people just saying, put it away. Yeah. That right. she didn't say anything. And then she reported me and now I'm banned from Uber. That's pretty shitty. That's like, also, I would have just also, said like, hey, also, keep it that on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're worried about getting COVID. But not worried enough to actually address the person who could be actively giving you COVID. That, that's the most millennial thing I've just, ever heard of. Just, yeah. wor- just worried enough to report the person after they've already breathed their COVID all over Was she you. like our age? Was she like our age? She, she had to have been. She was like 30, yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, passive-aggressive as shit. Yeah, that's the most passive-aggressive thing. It's like, I mean, I'll die, but I will definitely report you. Like, that's the most passive-aggressive thing. She told on even no thing. one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she just got you banned from Uber. Like, she did nothing for herself except get right, you banned. you just lost my business. By, all, all, by all means, get vaccinated and shit like that. But, oh, my God. <laughs> like, what? Just, like, confront me. I'll put the mask on. I don't care. So, uh... You can't... Like, you, she's, she was more comfortable confronting the disease she's afraid of than her passenger, who was probably going to be compliant. Yes. It's interesting, because, like... I mean, it checks out. Like, I know a lot of people our age can't even, like, order from a drive through menu without having a panic attack now. Yeah, calling somebody? It's, Yo, really, it's, important. it's, 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 it's really important to not only um, a- understand and, a- and address your mental health, but to apply any mental health problems you have to every single situation you're ever in. It is weird, though. So the generation yeah. before us... Uh, like to talk on the phone. We hate to talk on the phone. But then the generation the after us, the Zoomers, they, they, face they FaceTime, I, which is wild to me. I FaceTime a lot. I, I don't like having long text conversations or anything like that. Like, I don't want to talk on text, period. Usually, right. I'd rather talk on the phone or on FaceTime than text. Because, you know, I was 25, 26 at a time, and, you know, Grand X days, date, data UT student here and there, and they would FaceTime you. And, uh, is weird. I didn't yeah. want it. Want no part I, of it. I don't know if I want to be FaceTimed constantly. I like it's FaceTiming with my friends, but like no, no. The Zoom, the Zoomer class, like the current high schoolers and and junior high kids, especially constant. I'm talking hours at a time. FaceTime. Interesting. Well, speaking of FaceTime. I'm not going to talk about FaceTime at all. Um, I don't know how to segue. What a transition. Which, yeah, we, don't, we don't segue here. Uh, how is y'all Spotify wrapped? I use Apple Music. Pfft, nerd. How is um, your Spotify wrapped? You know, it's always more embarrassing than you care to admit. Yeah. For sure. Mine was too. I mean, mine would be mostly Gen Z pop so, and yeah. Taylor Swift. A lot more Drake than I care to admit. <laughs> I, I had Bo Burnham in mine, and I was not thrilled about that. Oh wow! Yeah, dude, I know. Listen to that album. It's a really good comedy special. It's I'm, crazy. It was good. I'm, I'm ashamed to admit that I liked a, a comedy special. I mean, it wasn't really the, a comedy the, special. The, both of what you just said was so fucking painfully on brand for you two yeah. that it makes me want to puke. <laughs> what he said, what I said. Yeah. I also had be a, real, okay? You don't like Drake. You're just listening to Drake, and you. What are you? I don't even know what you're doing. All right, I I I own my shitty taste. Okay, I love the fucking lamest, gayest music out there. <laughs> Top forty, baby. And I'm just fucking. <laughs> I love it. Well, you know, Rob, and then sometimes some fish. We're gonna. Yeah. <laughs> you are a fish guy. Jam band guy. He, he's no. He's just a fish guy. He's not a jam band guy. He's a fish guy. Pretty much just fish. I'll listen to some big yon- tray guy. I'll listen to some yonder mountain string man. That's actually a nice deep That's cut. That's a deep there. cut. That's a deep cut. That's, That's a very deep good. Cut. Deep uh, jam band cut. I've been to a Bellaflex concert. Bellaflex, the fucking man too. Yeah. Um, I know who Victor Wooten is. Uh, you know, there's there's some bands though, like you know, some uh, some stoner bands on the list that make their way in, like Expendables oh, yeah. and. Ooh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yikes. Again, I'm not. I'm, I don't care to admit. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I Blood Orange was my number one artist, and I was like, how is this possible? I have not listened to this much now Blood we're Orange. Saying real things. Yeah. <laughs> now we're not. Just like yo, oh, Drake. Listen to Drake. Fucking God. Drake's soft though. I have. A, I, I usually listen Drake's to Drake's basic. 
Drake's Drake, basic. <laughs> yeah, it is basic. Drake's the type of rapper that would have Drake as his number one in his Spotify It's inoff- What I'm saying is you were making fun of him for saying something inoffensive when you said something equally inoffensive. That's fine. And Either way, fair. we're going to talk about sound today. <laughs> no, no, we're only going to do our Spotify wrap-ups. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Spotify 2021 wrap-up yeah. by us. It's just the talking. history of our music. <laughs> for a year. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about sound today. Uh, and audio recording just in general, because I think Spotify rap brings up, you know, it's kind of crazy how we have all this stuff just accessible. Now we can stream anything we want ever. Um, but for most of history, up I, in- before you get into it, I kind of missed the days of like back in college when we had a separate iPod yes. that you would bring to the gym and then you had no other distraction. A music thing. It just shuffled. You just put it on shuffle or you just kind of like hit the next song. Or you pick a playlist. Yeah, but you had the Nano too where it didn't even have a screen. Oh, no screen. It's just, uh, it was just the wheel on it. Those were simple times. I even times. missed my days of high school when it was a fucking big book of CDs and you had to put in that one CD and listen to that. I mean, you I, could take it out. And I it even missed uh, being on the bus in like second, third grade and I had an R2-D2 cassette player. And... Uh, I would just take my parents' cassettes and yeah. I would just jam out on the bus with, with R2-D2 in my pocket and it'd be like fucking Love Shack for my parents' B-52. cassettes. Love Shack, <laughs> baby! It's a Love Shack! I love... I love anyone that does the B-52s for karaoke because yeah. it's like, you're just going to talk loud yeah. and flamboyantly. <laughs> you know how, who does, how do you know who does it amazingly, though? Who? Brian McGannon crushes I believe that. B-52s I believe that. Uh, I've heard him do Love Shack before. It was amazing. Um, but God, what was it? Had a Chrysler. It's as big as a whale, and it's <laughs> about to set sail. Yeah, that's it. I love the B fifty twos. But so you guys are kind of reminiscing about the most, basically, other than right now, the most accessible music has ever been. You're reminiscing about by a lot, a lot. Yes, by a long shot. Like you guys are like, oh, do you remember back then when I had my R2D2 cassette player and my big old binder full of CDs? Like we look at that as like ancient tech now. Like I mean, people that Mm -hmm. grow up that are in high school look at us like we're insane if we showed them a cassette player or a visor. God, I had the visor in the car. You know, the car visor with the CDs in it. Yeah. yeah. But um, you think that ever killed anyone in a car accident? (laughs) The visor? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure at some point. Like, like they just got ejected kind of into their ceiling and then sh- like Final Destination style into their CDs and shards. just And they just like fell into slices. Yeah. Yeah. And probably. they were like mixes that they burnt. They weren't even official CDs. Yeah. Yeah. Jenny's hot summer mix. We're, we, we'll be in love 97. forever. I'll love you forever. Yeah. Well. Who knew forever meant 1999. Do you think they threw out the CDs after a breakup or? They would just kind of throw it in there to feel sad. They put it in their desk and at, and then pull it out, yeah, when they feel sad. Yeah. Sometimes dude. you want to feel sad. Sometimes you do want to feel sad. Yeah, and then, you know, a mixed CD can actually bring you back to that moment. But anyway, so before all of that started, before any musical recording existed, music was, by and large, just for rich people. It was mainly for super high-class people. And I should say, not music in general, but music on demand. Like, yeah. so... You would have to have counterpoint slavery. Okay. <laughs> Make wow. music rich again. Yeah. Okay. Um, they were singing <laughs> because they were put there by rich people. Okay. Seems like a, quite the... I'm saying music was something that you had to experience in a ceremony, pretty much, if you wanted to hear it at all. Or if, on a field. Dan, you're you're kind of railroading this with a dumb take. Okay. Yeah. You Your just, take's bad. It's not a take. It's like Dan's life is talking to Dan. Yeah. No, I mean, it's it's not a take. You're right. There was people singing in fields when uh, we had slavery. Well, also, to be fair, the musicians were probably at, at best. Well, actually, at best, it would sometimes be uh, the rich, partly like the rich family's child or something like that. Maybe a part of it or children would be a part of that. But there was a certain amount of middle class musicians in like ancient times. Uh, sure, there were bards and stuff like that. Right, who could go do it at their own house. So I, I think I actually talked about this in an ancient episode I did early on. Maybe I just read it, but it didn't come up in the actual episode where like when families were eating dinner, 
uh, it was customary for them to have like the most musical child or something stand up at the corner of the table and sing or if they had an instrument played or something like that. That sounds miserable. That's pure chaos to me. Yeah. Just like the most, not the bet, like the qualifier here is the most musical child. Right. That doesn't mean they're good at music. Uh, yeah. They're the most yeah. musical. So you have like Timmy She's who can't carry a tune. When she comes. You're just trying so to you eat just a f- tap him on the head next. Yeah. You're just trying to eat like the one piece of goat meat you get every week. Yeah. It's it, you, you have all prepared this giant one cauldron meal mm-hmm. that you always have. Cause that's yeah. all you can afford is the one cauldron meal. You don't have courses yet. To you be have fair, your tone deaf- now. Now it's just called an instant pot. There's actually a really good podcast on the cut about that, but, um, listen to that. You can learn more on that if you want to, but, uh, no. So by and large, so people didn't really have access to music unless they were performing it themselves. Right. They didn't have people that could perform the music. Certainly they didn't have symphonies. That was something that was more for the higher class or even bands. Yeah. No, I mean, if you were going to hear music before the 1870s, you were going to see it in person mm-hmm. and you were going to pay a lot for it. What year is your example from that you're giving in general when you're like only rich people got music? Yeah. Are you thinking of a beginning date on that? Are Drummer you... boys, probably poor. I'm thinking probably Victorian England. Okay. Yeah. Like, well, pre-Victorian... 1870s is Victorian England. Well, pre-Victorian England then. Like, okay. just like, yeah. I'm, making, I didn't know I'm how far, lying. I didn't know how far I'm back lying. you were going. Yeah. I mean, I could go back to like forever before there was music in general. Well, that's that music predates history. I know they find bone flutes and stuff like that. You can't prove it was a flute. That's true. Any soldier, really, like Ed Sheeran. And, uh, anyway, we're going to just Thrones. get, you know what? I'm, I'm going to get back from my um, music didn't exist for everybody. We're just going to talk about how music started getting recorded then. Cool. Uh, so we're going to start with Ed, Edward Leon Scott de Martinville. He was the first to ever do it. 19 or not 19, 1853. Uh, he invented what was called a phonograph and he's the first to ever record sound and he gets this on the dumbest technicality possible. So basically what he did was he used a horn attached to a diaphragm, which vibrated a stiff bristle across a lamp black coated hand cranked cylinder. So sounds like a lot of work. This just sounds like everything invented in this time, or at least a lot of it just sounds like a cocaine fever dream. Like you, the reason that we have stuff that's able to take up so much of our time now is because people had so much time on their hands back. These things can't get invented unless if there's nothing, unless there's nothing else to distract you. Yeah, no, I mean, it's pretty much it. Like he was trying to recreate the ear basically. And so like the clips he recorded existed only as a visual representation of sound vibrations. Um, so basically by a little brush wiping lamp soot off of a cylinder. Okay. Right. So he recorded the first sounds ever, but not for playback. Oh, he just wanted to show he was the I first person does count as recording. He was recording sound, right? Yeah. So he was like, basically his intention was for the devices waves to be read by humans as one would read text, which obviously proved stupid. Right. No one was going to look at that and be like, oh, I can oh, hear it. Of course. I can hear it. This with is my what eyes. this would sound yeah. like. Uh, the idea of somehow. It's like someone telling a blind person, red. It's like showing them Braille before Braille even was a thing. There's like, I don't... F- feel this. Yeah. You get it? Do you, you get the menu? Order. <laughs> Go for Come it. Come on. Tell me what you. What pick, is this? Pick an appetizer. What, is, what are these assortment of dots sound like yeah. to you? Right. It's mozzarella sticks. So, um, yeah, uh, his intention was for the device's waves to be read by humans. The idea of somehow putting these recorded signals back into the air never occurred to Scott, nor did it occur to any human being on the planet until 1877. Uh, Patrick Feaster, a sound media historian and first sound co-founder. We are shouting out first sound here because we have to, to use the clips that I'm providing today. Okay. Yeah. It should uh, be public domain though, right? Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to knock these guys they, they've recreate they've recreated sounds from like 1850s okay so they're like please just give us credit so first sound is who made this cool. stuff uh he underlines the fact that the lack of playback doesn't mean scott doesn't deserve the credit uh he said this was a full-fledged record of the sound no question about it uh 
but you know, just like a seismograph records earthquakes, you don't want it necessarily playing back the earthquake. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So like, think of it like that basically. Uh, so he didn't really do it at all, but of course what happened, a bunch of hipsters at first sound found these old recordings these old v- visual representations of yeah. sound, and they decided to recreate it for us. Okay. So I'm going to play that for you right now. This is a April 9th, 1860 rendition of Eau Claire de de Lune. Dan, I don't know how you want to get this on here, but... Just smash that play button, baby. I'm trying to. It's not linking. That air guy, sorry. Goddamn Wikipedia. This is know. why I never donate to it. There it goes. Dude, it's been asking. It's been asking me nonstop. Oh, just a little ad first. Yep. Tight. It's a fucking banger, huh? Yeah. It's pretty good. What do you think about that, Dan? I think I'm going to have to do some post production. It sounds like uh, Topsy's execution. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. <laughs> Oh, do we have do we have audio for Topsy's execution now? Uh, you do not. Oh, but uh, yeah. So that was. Uh, it's funny you mentioned Topsy because we get to our boy Thomas Edison here in about twenty years. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, his voice sounded a little high pitched there. Obviously, they uh, they think that was due to translation of these early records into modern audio files being a little wonky. But honestly, they created the sound, so I don't know why they're making an excuse for why it sounds bad. It's like you took this from a line. And yeah. made it into something. So some people don't really count the Scott version as the first recording ever. I do because it's the first time anyone recorded sound, period. Yeah. Sounds fine. Um people so, that's kind of sounds like the debate where people have lately been trying to like say, oh, the Wright brothers didn't have the first flight because they had a plane shot off a rail instead of I didn't know that. A plane with wheels. They didn't take off from the ground? They did. Shot off a rail. So the it just had a different. So the propulsion of the plane didn't get it to lift. No, it was a Hot Wheels car. They pulled. They pulled the plane back a hundred yards and let it go. Pretty much. That's sick. Um, that, was kind of, that was kind of it. But people are now like, I don't know if that fucking counts. It's like, what do you? It flew on its own. So yeah, I mean, I personally, they wouldn't be able to do any audio recording at all if this guy never invented this thing. Uh, but the first ever real like audio playback with intent to play back the audio was okay. designed in 1877 by Thomas Edison. And this was with a phonograph. Phonograph worked kind of similarly. It was a machine that consisted of a sheet of tin foil wrapped around a cylinder drum, which was turned by a handle. Again, very cocaine mechanics, mm-hmm. just like someone turning it, yeah. having a needle to it, and then taking the etchings and then playing them back kind of situation. Of all the inventions, film, radio, Tele, uh, not television, but film, radio, pho- photography, f- and phonography, or whatever you want to yeah. call it. The sound thing blows my mind a million times. I, more. I don't understand how it I works. Don't, like, I literally don't understand. I was reading through a lot of source material on how all of these things work. It doesn't make sense that sound going through a needle. No, they're no, into no, it, like it no doesn't fuck. make fucking sense. No, no fucking part of it makes sense it, to me. It's like whenever people try to explain to me like fiber optic cables. They're like, oh, yeah, the information is light. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? The information is light. They're like, well, we take the signal, turn it into light, and then shoot it to other light. I'm like, mm-hmm. but that doesn't make sense to me. It's like, oh, we I dragged a even... hot needle across wax, and then we did it again backwards, and now you hear the sound. That makes no sense. I, yeah, I don't even try to understand it. So it's, it's like Jesus, I just believe. Right. So the first ever recording ever, ever. Sorry, I don't have this queued up. I should have loaded these before, said, yeah, the, uh, before the ads started playing. So, is this? The uh, first words I spoke in the original phonograph. A uh, little piece of practical poetry. Mary had a little lamb. Its feet was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. That's Thomas Edison. Oh. That's Thomas Edison doing the first ever spoken recording. Now, were those cracks we hear... Uh, just bad audio because the phonograph was so new, or were those Edison's men uh, breaking the kneecaps of everyone showing up with other inventions so that he could steal them? Uh, yeah, Edison was a noted thief. Yeah, uh, he was the worst. But I actually think he's the best and most American American that ever lived. I respect him. He's the reason Hollywood exists. I mean, yeah, 
No, it's true. Um, yeah, it was the cracks though were because there was not a lot of noise cancellation on the recording. So you got to think like this is all acoustic recording. So everything's just kind of getting funneled into a literal funnel. Imagine back in the day, not having to really worry about sound quality. Yeah, couldn't be me. Sound nice? No. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine a podcast done on a phonograph? Yeah. It's interesting though too, hearing like. Um, his voice, it's all like warbly, like, yeah. it's like, do you think they really sounded like that? Or is that just shitty audio quality too? Uh, I think people maybe had a little bit weirder, like speaking voices as opposed to like, you know what I mean? Like, like a proper speaking I'm voice. I'm giving a speech. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's true. Like if you look at like old BBC, like 1950s. This is the news. You yeah. know, that kind of voice. That definitely is a thing for a while. Um, yeah, so eventually two guys, Alexander Graham Bell and Charles Tainter, uh, one of those guys should sound very familiar to you, took Edison's model and tweaked it. Uh, they used a hard wax removable cylinder and replaced the soft tinfoil-covered fixed drum. Uh, so they actually started using a wax drum instead of a tinfoil one. And uh, Thomas Edison heard about that, was like, fuck you guys, I'm going to steal that. And make it better. Right. So he immediately did that. Uh, Alexander Graham Bell would later, obviously. Never let jealousy, or like let jealousy inspire you, is what I'm saying. Basically, yeah. He was like, oh, you guys took my idea and made it better. Well, I'm going to make it better again. Yeah. So he started working on that. In the meantime, uh, so basically what what uh, Edison did was he patented the stuff that Alexander Graham Bell was making under his own name. Tight. Because that's what fucking what's his name does that's what thomas edison does he's a patent troll he is a patent troll uh there was another guy though named emil berliner and uh he knew edison was gonna try and like fuck everybody up with his patents mm -hmm. so he just went totally right field he was like fuck this i'm not doing it on a cylinder i'm gonna do it on a disc and he invented the first uh record okay ever and so what was interesting about the way he did that though was he did it in a way that he could mass produce records it was basically like instead of etching on a wax cylinder, you etched on a wax disc in between the grooves, like we know now as a typical record today. And what would happen is he would press that into a, another wax press and then take that wax press and use that to print more, if that makes sense. So he would make, like, before he figured out how to mass produce and replicate these things, you can only make one record at a time for things. Right. So if there was a record made for someone performing in the studio, there would be one. That would be it. Then he started taking impressions of that and mass producing it. And what year is this? This would be, uh, they think this was between 1887 and 1893. Okay, so, so we're not even in the 20th century yet. No, 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 no. So once they start doing, like basically once they figure out the mass production scale model, that's when you start seeing records getting produced for like opera performances and stuff like that. But you don't really start to see modern, um, Basically, you don't see like a lot of modern like development until around World War One, World War Two, and that's because you're starting to see the advent of the radio for mass communication right. like across places, and they're using a microphone for everything. So before, as opposed to what, just shouting at stuff, as opposed to shouting into a cylinder, yeah, as opposed to playing into something that's funneling the music down into like a wax needle, uh, the, the the devil machine we don't understand, yeah, that's like dragging a it's needle across magic. hot wax, it's wax. Magic. yeah. Sorry, guys, I need a minute. <coughs> Jake's still sick. It's fine. I couldn't touch my baby all weekend. And, and honestly, that was like a 50-50 thing. You like, weren't allowed to touch your kid? Yeah, because I was so fucking sick. Oh, man. I didn't want to get him sick. So part of me was like, man, I miss my baby. And the other part of me was like, I don't do shit this weekend. That's tight. Yeah, no, we didn't hang out with you or your baby either because I was sick. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, we're supposed to go to the Christmas tree lighting. Another That's thing true. I'm glad I got out of. Well, if I ever actually do get sick, I'm, I'll make sure to hang out with your baby. Thanks. Why do you have, what, what is on your arm, Dan? KT tape. What is that? Um, kinesis tape. Dan sore. Yeah. From lifting. B and age. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like you're sick. Anyway, after the Your end of the... muscles are sick. Yeah, my muscles are sick. Yeah. They're breaking down. Oh, I never get sick. It's called aging, but yeah. Yeah, that's a sickness too. 
so yeah, uh, after the First World War, the record companies began to face their first serious competition from the radio. Radios used electronic me- microphones to capture audio sounds. This difference was not lost on the companies, who in secret began to experiment with means of recording using microphones instead of the typical uh, autophone. So horn. basically, records sounded like dog shit compared to radio. Yep, because radio had a way of... One, reducing noise. They had way, ways of already reducing the noises. and not, They're not capturing everything that's happening in a room. Right. It's direct into the microphone. And then two, it's easier to translate. I guess I don't understand why, but they say it is. Because you're, not, you're probably not canceling out a bunch of other yeah, shit. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't ask a lot of questions on audio. I just yeah. let Dan handle it. Yeah, you got any, got any brain busters on this one? It all checks out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so, actually... Going back to Alexander Graham Bell, the Bell Telephone Laboratories during the 1920s as part of their work developed high-quality public address systems, too, in the U.S., and they started using these uh, low-distortion, high-frequency range microphones for record recording in general. So 1920s into, like, the 1940s is really when you start to see audio quality pick up for records. Um, And then into uh, 1939... Independently from all of each other, Germany, Japan, and the U.S. independently all discover uh, magnetic tape recording. In Three best countries in the world right back then. Seriously, though, if you they're, think about it. They were crushing it. Yeah, it's insane to think they all independently found it at the same time, too, in the same year. Yeah. Uh, and who's to say who was right? It all sounds terrible, though. Like, what? you ever go and listen to, like, the ink spots? Like, I don't want to see the world catch on, or, like, I don't want to see the world... The Bioshock, or whatever. The Bioshock, yeah, yeah, guys, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's all crackly still. It's like that crackly, weird, distorted music is still better than what it was like twenty years before that. Like infinitely better. It sounds uh, the same, but the people have like sound. a weird. They like want the crackle essentially. They're like, oh, the crackle. That means it's real music. Yeah, that's interesting because it was people, vinyl before vinyl. Yeah, yeah, pretty much because like, vi- well, it was vinyl. We have a fucking record player in my house. My wife goes nuts for it. I have a record player. I love it. Um, it's but, fine. Yeah, I mean, there there is an argument to be made that like, I'd rather have a Bluetooth speaker. It, I mean, it's clearly inferior <laughs> technology, and I mean that not just like in the sound. I mean that in that I have to flip a fucking record over after twenty five minutes. Well, okay, so if you think about it this way, though, like the audio quality on records now is probably the best you'll ever get because it's not compressed, a right. lot of it. Like, I mean, a lot of it is compressed. It's just a digital file being put onto a record, which is stupid. But if they're actually making a real record where it's like being, you know, recorded there to the record and then put on another record and duplicated, that's, you're getting like, there's no loss on that sound. Okay. That's why people like that typically. And you need to have the right setup for that too. You can't just go in there and like get a record player, have just like whatever plug into it speaker wise and have that lossless sound that you would get from a record. Most of the time we're playing MP3s on a vinyl is what we're doing when we get a record. Yeah. But like old records and with the right equipment, you're getting perfect sound. The crackles are imperfections though. And that is not part of that. That's just but a that's misnomer. People want. That's people what want people want. The... Yeah. Right. Exactly. Should we just put in a crackle underlay for all our podcasts? Just to make people feel at home. We did that for a sketch for a spare bedroom. Which one? Uh, <laughs> the Adventures of Angry Boy. Oh, was that? Th- nice. Uh. Um, yeah, so like literally a couple months after they start experimenting with recording on the um, magnetic tapes, which is the start of the 8-track, actually. The 8-track starts in 1939, believe it or not. But they don't use it till the 60s? Uh, not for cars and shit like that, but the first use of it is uh, Disney's Fantasia in 1940. They use it six months later in a movie. How do they use it in a movie? What? Yeah, 1940. What, the movie's on the A-track? Like the sound for the movie's on the oh, A-track. Okay. They, play, uh, they play it in tandem. with uh, it. It's, yeah, first, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. one of the first times they're using like that technology for sound, and they're also using it with a movie. Okay. And you got to think 1940. Better not use it for anything else. Disney will come after you. 1940s, so this is where I imagine most people discover mushrooms in America. It was around 1940 when, what, Fantasia, when Fantasia came out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude. Was Have it, you ever seen the original Fantasia? Yeah. Fucking rules. As a child. Yeah. I actually thought it was boring as shit as a child. I'd rather watch it high as like a 19 year old. Rob something. was more of a Steamboat Willie guy. Mm-hmm. Mm. I like Steamboat Willie. Beep, beep. Um, so, yeah, actually, between 1940 and 1963, not much happens at all. There's some stuff going on. Yeah, I would beg to argue that it's the World War 
yeah. the second one. Some stuff was happening. And then you recovering from that. Yeah. And then Korea. Cold War, yeah. all that fun stuff. Who needs who needs audio? But honestly, yeah, music, the way we understand it today and the way we interact with it today doesn't really start until 1963. And that's when Phillips introduces the compact cassette tape format and offers licenses. How worldwide. do you get the boys motivated over in Germany, though? You need music. That's right. Well, the, they were doing that for us. Like in, I don't know what the German version was, but the Japanese version of like Tokyo Rose or whatever. Mm -hmm. She was just like, <laughs> forget what she would say. She would just be like, all of your friends are dead. Your wife is sleeping with other men. The war is hopeless. Go home. And then she'd be like, and now here's another, because they would play American hits on the, on the radio. And they would like to keep them listening to it. And then they would like the Tokyo Rose would come back on with great sound quality and be like, your wife is bearing other men's children. <laughs> Better get home. That's honestly. Your best buddy was ripped to pieces by our bullets. There's no hope for you. That's honestly so demoralizing. Like, is it? They, I think it's hilarious. I yeah, would, I would it's be both like, hilarious and motivated. Yeah, I would be like, fuck the songs. Like, more of her. Terrible. Yeah, I'm going to the Japanese. I'm gonna commit some war crimes yeah. now. Yeah. Do you remember in Generation Kill, there was like a rumor, like the beginning of Generation Kill, the first episode, they talk about uh, they think that J-Lo died. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's right. That's, and, then, and then they find out that it might be like Iraqi propaganda it's a to demoralize yeah. them. Yeah, it's yeah. a psyop to tell yeah. them that J-Lo died. And that's in like 2003. That was like, it was that and like the mustaches thing. I yeah. remember it was a big thing where it's like, well, the guys like having mustaches, like, but now they know that we have mustaches. So it's a way to infiltrate our ranks. And it's just like how disorganized everything was over yeah. there. Everything was rumor mill. That is, I'm probably going to go back and rewatch that show. It's a great show. Um, so albums on cassette after the 1963 patent arrived in 1966 in the U.S. with Nina Simone, Eartha Kitt, and Johnny Mathis. Uh, how much did a cassette cost in 1966? That's a great question. Because people were still using records into the seventies. God, how many documentaries have already used misunderstood by Nina Simone? I don't know. What is that song? I don't fucking know. Like, uh, I, I, I'm not going to sing it for you, please. No, just a little bit. No. Why? But I'm sick. <laughs> what if my dying wish was for you to just sing to me by my bed? Straight faced, a whole damn. Song. Okay, You're so dying in silence. <laughs> this a, a cassette would cost about thirty five dollars in today money. Okay, that's not cheap. Like, no, it's expensive as fuck. Yeah, that's like that's ironically how much like a record costs. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's, like it's it's yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like that's basically two cassettes would cost you a, a video game, basically. No, right. Which is insane in its own. Because right? I think I was going to say because I think CDs were super expensive when they first became a thing. They as were. Well. They were. It was. It was about the same thing. It was probably like 40, yeah. 45 bucks. Um, and then we just swang and missed with Blu-ray. Yes. Did we miss Blu-ray? Blu-ray. There was almost nothing as useless as Blu-ray. Uh, the like four sorry. years. Sorry. No, there was uh, HD DVD. Do you remember that? Oh, it was just like a better version of a DVD. Yeah, it's like it was just like better DVD. Good lord, it sounds fucking awful. Yeah, remember that though when that was like a viable gift, uh, gift at like Christmas and stuff, just DVDs and video cassettes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. Good sure. movie. Stop. I would ask for movies all the fucking time for Christmas. Movie stop, hit up the like five dollar bin. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Go to Blockbuster and get the ones they don't want to restock anymore. Mm -hmm. I, had Always some, get that. I had some dope DVDs back in the day. I loved to get in DVDs for Christmas. So uh, the cassette player actually is the kind of leads to the concept of listening to an album in general. Like most, not the record, because there were A sides and B sides. Uh, there's A sides and B sides, but on a record, you can skip tracks. You can skip to what you want to hear on a record yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. easily. You just it's pick not it up. easy. Oh, it's a lot easier than a tape. That's true. You got to yeah. fucking fast forward. It, cassette tapes are dog shit. It, cassette I tapes really, are... I really... I guess they're more portable. You could play them in a car. I, I, but other than that, there's in no way are cassette tapes really an advantage over It's got to be the worst sound quality out of all of them. Like, if you think about it, like, I'd prefer a record or digital over a fucking cassette player. Yeah. Like cassette, and cassettes can, like, burn out. I, I don't know. Like, I've had... I had cassettes that, like, after playing them for a long time... They stopped working. Right. That was it. The video version of that, though, the uh, VHS tape 
I was a big fan of rewinding those. Like you would get the rewind machine that you would just kind of place it in. Oh, the that automatic would, rewinder? That yeah. would do it faster and be yeah. like... Yeah. yeah. That so was always did. satisfying. Yeah. I'll, it was also fun to just watch the movie in reverse for like 15 minutes. Especially if you got the audio on it when it was in reverse. Like, yeah. 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 You know, like the chipmunk noise. Um, but yeah, as it was harder to select tracks on cassette than on record, listening to an album serially without skipping became ingrained in music culture. Cassettes also allowed more time for the album than vinyl. The standard LP length was 45 minutes in total between side A and side B compared to cassettes allowed up to 45 minutes per side. So there was a lot more commitment to creating a full length album. That would explain a lot of like, uh, Led Zeppelin albums as opposed to Beatle albums. Oh, yeah. Yeah, where Led Zeppelin could have a song that was just 15 minutes long. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It really, I got to say, so the cassette was a more annoying way to listen to things and encouraged the artists not to self-edit. Right. Perfect. No, I mean, it's true, though. It's, it's kind of interesting. It does transform music and how we think about it because of, like, just those two things alone. But um, also, as cassettes become cheaper, we start seeing music really transform as, like, a DIY kind of thing. It's not just, like... The original SoundCloud rapper. You start seeing people, like, these little cassettes. One, if they're not copy-protected, you can record anything on them. Even yeah. by blanks, they start getting really cheap toward the oh, 70s even and 80s. When I, dude, even when I was in grade school, uh, and CDs were a thing by then, but... You couldn't record off the radio with CDs, but you could record off the radio with cassettes. Oh, man. I would sit by the radio like, God, this little, I was like maybe six or seven. I had a little uh, rec or tape player with the radio on it. I could record to the tape player. Yeah. And it's like, you just wait for that song to come on. You hit record. Yep. And then you hope you don't get the DJ like, hey, it's the Stiz. Yeah, they yeah. fucking do like the first 30 seconds. Like, yeah, don't forget, like, yeah. 96.7's fucking Jack Off Festival is this October. Come see Milo and the Stiz. Yeah, yeah. and now, here, and like the, um, the music's playing, but it hasn't started yet. And then it just starts up and your Marcy Playground's ruined. And yeah. Simpler times. Simpler times. You get the radio do radio edit? DJs still do that? Do they yes. those voices? They do, for sure. I'm one of the idiots who still listens to the radio. Do you listen to drive time radio? I listen to the radio every day. Do you listen to, do you listen to Jason Dab or whatever? I flip around. I mostly just look for the music. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I like to have things curated for me. Hmm. Like Spotify would if you had it? Or Pandora. <laughs> yeah. So it's not good Serves enough. you up songs. I like us too many choices. I like a Pandora limited, gives you no I like a limited selection. So yeah, you start seeing a lot more DIY people. I mean, like a band you actually just mentioned, the B-52s was big in the DIY movement. Like punk in general comes out of a lot of cassette recording because you can right. easily record things. Like you can go so to shows. This is things going viral before it can go viral. Yeah, I mean, one of the most common things for like one of the really hot things people did back then was they'd go to like say you go to CBGB in New York and you just plug a tape player into the master deck. You got a show. Yeah. Like you could charge, people would start charging. That was like a luxury you could pay for. Like yeah. you could just be like, oh, I'm going to plug in for this. Um, Jam Master J, I believe it was. Um, he would like, he started passing out his shit to just people in cabs. He's like, people would start listening to music in cabs. They'd call it like a hold call. They would just take cabs and listen to music because they had tape players in them. Yeah. So people would pay money to ride around in cars to listen to tapes. So to music. One time, when I was uh, in college, I was driving down Del Mar in St. Louis. Uh, it was over break, I think Christmas break. And on the way home, and Del Mar for most of the drive from the city back to where I live is not fucking great. Mm -hmm. And this car, this SUV full of black dudes pulls up next to me. And they roll down the, win their, the driver's side window and they're like, hey, 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 hey. And they're to the they're to the right of me, right? So yeah. I, I have to roll down my passenger side window. I'm alone in my car. And did like, you have to hand crank it? No, no, no. <laughs> wasn't that old? Okay. Wasn't that long ago? I mean, you know, I did drive a lot of shitty cars, but at this point, there was automatic windows on that one. And um, I'm like, "Can I help you?" Uh, and they're like, "Yo, you like you like rap?" And I was like, "Uh, sure. yeah, yeah, why not?" Yeah. What kind of rap you like? And I was like, I don't know, I like a lot of rap. Whatever. No one's ever asked me that part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No one, I've, I've never gotten this far in a conversation about rap. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, check this shit out. And they, they're like, you want it? And I was like, yeah. I'm like, I guess fucking no to them. Like, yeah. And they, they're like, all right. And they like reach over and I like, 
fucking grabbed the CD. And uh, it was Yo Gotti and his crew. It was Yo Gotti? It was Yo Gotti and his crew. And they gave, oh, he no. gave me one of his fucking CDs. You might be responsible for the death of young Dolph. Well, did Yo Gotti later. get young Dolph killed? Well, he took 100 shots at young Dolph. Yeah. Damn. How the fuck you missed a whole 100 shots, Jake? I don't know. Missed that. Yeah, yeah Yo Gotti, uh, like he literally, him and Dolph had a beef to the point where he shut up his house, but obviously missed 100 Dolph. times. Missed 100 times, and then uh, Dolph made an entire album trolling him. That's yeah. great. You gotta love that. No, I, I do miss Joseph Joseph Gotti did not miss the 101st time, though. But yeah, Yo Gotti fucking tossed me. Well, like, allegedly, and, we don't, you know, it's unsolved right now. Yeah. But yeah, he tossed me a fucking CD. Well, one of his guys did anyway. I remember I was at the mall in Gainesville uh, working, and a guy was passing out his mixed CD. Yeah. I was like, oh man, let me get some. He's like, all right. Yeah. He's like, I don't want you listening to. Yeah, He's you're like, useless. You, to yeah. Me. It's like, you are not going to get anyone else to listen to this, but yeah. that's funny. By the um, way, if you want to get a mixed CD, uh, Go walk around 6th Street during South By. No shit. We're just outside ACL, yeah. 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 Um, but also, professor of music psychology of Edinburgh University believes that portable cassettes changed the way we thought about ourselves with music because cassettes did invent the mixtape, the very concept of it. Right. So now people start asking these questions like, well, what do I want to listen to? Well, like, wh- how do I want my mood to be curated? Democratized music a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you got to, instead of like having to hear whatever was being played, like you're saying, you get to have a real say in what's going into your ears every day. So that very much changes the way we think about music and how we interact with it. And then another thing that's cool is... Too much choice. I'm against it. Curate it for me. Well, here's a tale as old as time. The Dead Kennedys also adopted this idea on their late 1981 EP in God We Trust, Inc. Uh, Printed on the blank B-side of the tape was the message, home taping is killing record industry profits. We left the side blank so you can help. Sick. Yeah, no. Yeah, Dead Kennedys. Fuck the establishment. Thanks for buying our CD. We're rich. Or our cassette. We're rich now. Well, yeah. No, I mean, pretty much. But like, Good Lord. a lot of... Anti-capitalist uh, capitalists are the fucking worst. Uh, I mean, they're, it's, they're, it's, they're well within their right to express that. That's fine. But like, they are getting rich off their anti-capitalism from capitalism. I don't... Uh, man, back then, I don't know how much how rich they were getting from, like, their record label. Record labels got everything. I'm not saying that record labels are good or anything like that. I'm just saying... Yeah, you, no, you they were money. making more money than if they didn't have a record label. Absolutely. Right. But this starts the argument of, well, is home recording piracy? Is recording something off the radio piracy? Probably. And is it? Is recording something? I don't care, but yes. It's piracy if you think about it, I guess. Yeah, but like... I mean, if you're enough of an asshole to watch Avengers, like the Avengers off of something some guy brought his camcorder in or iPhone in to record... Yeah. Yeah, I guess if you're... Yeah, fine. If you, It's like getting baby birded a filet mignon, but that's, you know, if right. you want to do it that way, that's fine. Sure. So, uh, I forget... You the, wouldn't take that? What? Baby birded a filet Someone mignon? baby birded in a filet mignon? That sounds so not. gross. Probably not. It sounds... Like, uh, yeah, I'll take that. I suppose I'd who's, get... Who's, who's baby doing birding? it? I was yeah. going to say, who's doing it? This is a classic Dan question. Who's doing the baby birding? That's no, he, that's, he's... He brought up the hypothetical. All right, me, Dan. I'm baby birding you a filet mignon. Yeah, I'll still take it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, absolutely, still, uh, absolutely not. Is it a good filet mignon? No, it's a bad one. Like, it, it's overcooked? No, we're going medium rare Vince Young's steakhouse. Yeah, it's Vince Young's. Okay, so like a, like a mid... Blame it now. It's very mid. I'll, st- I'll take it. Okay. Yeah. Can we you want to go to the- Vince Young's after this? Yeah. You, can we put that to the test? <laughs> I'll happily buy a. Fucking- you're paying for it though, right? Yeah. And then you're you're baby birding. Well, you, it's I'm funny because you get to try it first. Yeah, I'm yeah. fine with paying for it. Okay. Yeah. Just don't take too much of the flavor. I mean, I gotta you know make sure it gets down your throat okay. Is oh. this how you beat Crohn's? You have someone pre-digest it for you? The protein. The protein? Mm-hmm. Breaks down the protein, yeah. yeah. So it gets to his muscles quicker. I like it. Yeah. It's just a filet, red sludgy filet mignon goo. If, yeah, actually, I just heat it up on a spoon and just inject it into my veins. Sick. That sounds safe. Um, but yeah, no, so uh, some guy invented the direct to, like, direct copier of a cassette player, where it's like, oh, you can put your tape in here, and it'll copy directly to this tape to try and yeah, push yeah. the limit. And they're like, uh, fuck you, we're taking you to court. You can't make this thing. He's like, why not? I can sell whatever I want to sell. Right. There's no reason it I can't have do nothing, this. It doesn't have anything to do with 
Like that's a useful tool. Right. It's on the consumer to not. And that's where you get, that's where like most modern day piracy laws are made. Right. It's based off of like, you can't fuck people over for making technology. It's like peer to peer sharing, right? It's like you can't, yeah, it's not, it's on the user of the technology, not the inventor of the technology. It's it's, honestly, in a lot of ways, it's like saying like, oh, you can't make guns because that gun could kill someone. Like, well, no, it's on the person. Right. To not commit the murder. No, it's interesting though. They, I mean, they still cite this case for like piracy cases where yeah. it's like, oh, well they were using, you can sue LimeWire or whatever the fuck it was, Kazaa or whatever you used back then. But they're like, no. Right. They're pirating it. It's peer to peer. Yeah. Fuck you. Like, that's how it should be. The so- yeah, I agree completely. It's like, because like you can't just shut down Pirate Bay because people are pirating too much shit. I'm right. more B to B personally. Business to business you're piracy. Yeah. Business to business. So you're big China guy? Of course. Because that would be the prime that's, example that's of business B2B business piracy. piracy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, so then you get to uh, 1979, Phillips, again, the creator of the cassette tape, the modern cassette tape, creates the modern compact disc in 1979. Do you know what the first CD was, Dan? Kid Rock. No. It's Billy Joel's 52nd Street. Hmm. It's released in 1982, October 1st in Japan. I that's fitting in a lot of ways. Yeah. Because uh, any most people who love Billy Joel probably pretty well off. He he yeah. <laughs> is a banner hanging in the rafters of uh Madison Square Garden. Makes sense. I could I could see some asshole in like a uh, turtleneck and a chain just like with the first CD of Billy Joel just yeah. putting it on just very Patrick Bateman he being like listen to the high digital quality One. like just nutting over this like Probably 100%. what sounds like a, a shitty recording of a LimeWire. Like, yeah. remember when you download something off of like LimeWire back in the day, and it sounded like it got run over on a gravel track. Yeah, probably sounded like that. Um, I was, that's on brand for a Billy Joel listener. That's true. You know what I mean? Like, it's like someone who's like, ah, oh, I just love the like this sort of working man vibe, but like, no, neither of them are working men at all. No, I guess Billy Joel was like kind of he's a piano player at a dive bar or something like that. But that makes you an artist. That doesn't make you a white or a blue collar working. That's man. true. You're still you're soft. still a musician. You yeah. might be poor, but you're still soft hands. Yeah, like he's singing about the blue collar man. Yeah, yeah, because he sees him every day. He's I watch the talk blue about. collar man every day. He's Drink. a sad piece of shit. <laughs> Pay me money to sing about him. While he drinks his misery away. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. Um, honestly, guys, I get a little fever dreamy here when I was writing this part. So I'm just going to skip to the good part. Why? Because I have nothing. Fever dreamy? What does that mean? I, my facts are all over the place. I don't know okay. where I was going. There's no through line. I want to talk about Tipper Gore, though. Tight. I love yeah. Tipper Gore. Yeah, Tipper Gore. So, uh, you know. CDs come out, you get into the mid eighties. So there's tapes everywhere. There's CDs everywhere. At this point, standards have gone out the window. People are singing about vaginas and guns. Oh yes. They are singing about vaginas and guns so hard. So hard. In fact, that, um, there is a movie that came out purple rain. Yeah. Um, I believe actually my favorite song is that pussy. So wet, it rusted my gun. Who sings that? I don't know. It's probably a rap song, right? It's a rap song. (laughs) Did you say a lyric hoping that was a lyric that existed? man. Birdman? Yeah. yeah. No, I just made it. I just made it up. I just, I just assumed it was a thing. Okay. That pussy so wet, it rusted my gun. And then Tipper Gore gets upset because okay, that, no, that's, that's, it's just, it's just, it's a <laughs> sentence. A, it's a lyric full of Tipper Gore triggers. That is a dirty Will Smith song that didn't make the <laughs> cut. Welcome <laughs> to Miami. It's the third verse. Welcome to Miami. Yeah. My gun's rusty in Miami. I just the flow like, you went with. I, I just, for whatever reason, Will Smith's rap came to my head. Yeah, because it's like simple and stupid. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. But he doesn't, he doesn't curse. Uh, he doesn't curse. So that was left on the uh, cutting room floor. Yeah. Uh, Will, you said pussy. Uh, for those that don't know, the PMRC is the Parents Music Resource Center. So back in the day, not only Sounds were... harmless. Yeah. It really does, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's not. It's not harmless. Tipper Gore was the one that thought that like Double Dragon was going to turn kids into school shooters. Yes, Tipper, dude. So we've talked about this before. When obviously it was Doom that did that. Yes, and Marilyn Manson. Yeah, Marilyn Manson did do that. Marilyn Manson sucking his own penis. Well, Marilyn to, Manson removing a rib to be able to suck his own penis. To white culture, right? By the way, Joe Rogan didn't have to remove a rib to do that, right? But no. again, that is white culture that believes Marilyn Manson got a rib removed. I, Joe Rogan doesn't have to remove anything to. Every culture has their own Marilyn Manson. 
like black culture thinks LL Cool J did that. Oh, oh really? wait, really? Yeah. Like, so it's a, it's an urban myth about a different person in every culture. I, I'm pretty sure the Mexican community probably has their own version. Maybe like Ricky Martin, Ricky Martin or something. The, the, yeah. probably be no, too on, that, that no one, no one would care about that. Right. It would have to be like, uh, Guillermo Guillermo del Toro? (laughs) No, because that's literally physically impossible. Uh, It would have to be um, like Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo would be... But no, it needs to be a singer because we're going on the singers. So it it needs to be... uh, What's his fucking name? Married to Anna Kornikova. Enrique Iglesias. Enrique Iglesias, yeah, Mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. You can run, you can hide. That was a good one. He, He became his own hero. I can be your hero, baby. He was singing to himself. I can suck your dick today. Yeah, he sings that as he like pulls himself into his as own dick. But it's not okay to suck your own dick. It's work. That's all that is. It's fine. I would do it if I could. Would you? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you jerk yourself off. That's Hands not down. Okay. No, I think I think I think that sucking your own dick would be a lot more like sucking a dick than getting your dick sucked. Mm, I don't think it's either. It's kind of a. It's a gray zone. <laughs> More like a white zone. Oh, anyway, uh, Tipper Gore, uh, I believe her daughter came home uh, with the Darling Nikki single from Prince's Purple Rain. Okay. Uh, Purple Rain's a pretty uh, graphic movie, and yeah. the content is pretty graphic in general. She got upset. Can I, can I say something? Can I have a Sure. Uh, I don't think Prince's music is that good. That's fine. I like Prince a lot. I really just, I, I listen to all the music and I'm like, whatever. That's fine. Music, you know, here's the, th- the great thing about music. There's so much of it. You can be wrong about some. It's okay. Prince is great. Okay, but what if I also believe that I'm not wrong about anything? Well, well you should never admit that you're wrong about right. something. Yeah. So what I believe is I'm right about this. And if whatever your guys' music opinions are, if I disagree with them. Suppress that. I'm right about that. Yeah. So either way, I do, I just we've talked about this before, Rob. And you want to ban Prince, right? You want to get rid of Prince? You think he's awful? Uh, sure. Yeah. What what political party affiliation do you think you are in 1985? If you want to ban Prince, oh for, yeah, 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 uh, both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone sucks in 1985. Because right. like when you think about it, you you hear Tipper Gore, wife of Al Gore. You don't think of liberals as being like people that want to ban things like music or raunchy shit like that. Right. Nowadays. But they kind of do. Well, you don't think of liberals who want to, no, they want to ban sexual things. Now yeah, liberals want to ban everything now. It's kind Actually, of. Actually, they kind of do even want to ban sexual stuff nowadays to an extent. It's weird. Like it's, it's all cyclical though. It's, Cause like it is cyclical. 100%. Yeah. To, yeah. But it was weird though. Both liberals or, well, I don't even call them liberal, but Democrats and Republicans were both big. Big band boys back then. Big time. Yeah. No, it was like a, it was a bipartisan effort. Like Tipper Gore was working on shit with like Strom Thurmond on this shit. Like Strom Thurmond was a, for Segre- the PMRC. Segregationist. Yeah. Oh, the guy who literally would, is probably rolling in his grave, like because Barack Obama got elected. Yeah. Yeah. Him and, him and Biden were bros. <laughs> People forget that. Yeah. I, you know. What are you going to do? So at some point you just got to read the terrain and deal with what's, deal the, you can't not work with the people <laughs> in, in the Senate with you. Like, yeah. I don't know what you. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, a couple other people. So there's Tipper Gore. There's Mike Love from the Beach Boys was a big fan of the PMRC. And Joseph Coors of Coors Beers. They were all against this dirty, filthy music being so accessible to kids. Coors? Coors. Wasn't Charles Manson associated with the Beach Boys? Yes. Was he associated with them? He or? was bros with one of the Beach Boys. The uh, Kevin Love's uncle, right? Maybe. Yeah, Kevin Love's uncle wasn't part We're of We're naming Beach Boys. everyone but this Beach Boy. <laughs> yeah, it was like it, Brian Wilson, maybe? Yes. Like, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah. about to say maybe Brian Wilson. That would make yeah. sense to me. Either way, as really, though, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. The Coors guy? The Coors guy, yeah. Coors? Jim Coors. The or number, Joseph Coors, yeah. Also, did you ever hear the Jim? number one like, Actually, creator of domestic violence in the mountain time zone? Right, yeah. Was it? Uh, <laughs> Of course, had actively supported Reagan's candidacy, and of course, offered offices to the PMRC. This was tied into like um, the rising political conservatism under Reagan as well. Like this was just like 
a movie. Well, there was a social conservative that was, of course, like a backlash to the 60s and 70s. For that sure. That was the 80s. Like, things but got was, more buttoned was, up. Yeah, for sure. And that was on both sides, too. Like, you saw it in both parties, which I think makes sense, like, especially with the free love experiment. back and forth. Yeah, definitely. But, so, they, the whole idea was to rate music, which, in theory, isn't that bad of an idea. It's like, hey, put something on the CD, the ubiquitous parental advisory explicit content. Yeah, I'm not necessarily against that when you we literally have, have no content. idea what anything is. We have it no. on our podcast. Yeah, no, but if you think about it, what has sold more records than that little parental advisory thing? It helps, if anything. Yeah, it's yeah. good advertising. And also, though, you do need that to an extent because, like, fuck, dude, there's people on YouTube, like the guy, what, he dressed up like Spider-Man and shows his wiener halfway through? Or what? Some, something weird like that? You can't do that on YouTube. Wait, what? No, it doesn't show his dick. I, 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 I exaggerate, but there's, like, a guy, it was like a big thing for a while. He like, shoot him webs, yes, but not out of his hands. Is this Rob's side gig, post Grand X? Were you dressing up as Do I look Spider-Man? that rich? Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Good point. Um, no, but like, no, there was some guy, there was like a thing where like people would dress up as like children's characters and kids would YouTube it, like not knowing what it was. And it would be like kiddie stuff for like, two minutes to get past the YouTube algorithm. Oh, then and then they start doing too. weird shit. Yeah. It, would, it wouldn't be like overtly like, here's my dick, but it would be like, they'd like rub themselves on things. There was, there was sexual, there was a sexual nature. And, and undertones, not the right word. It was overtones. Yeah. Yeah. But an overtone wasn't so overt that it was like, yeah, like a guy jacking off some, cause it's still YouTube, but it would like get, it would get fucking bizarre. Yeah. It and was be like, you should do this to your mommy or like, something yeah, like, it, it was, there was malintent there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, and anyway, totally... I, I'm not against a ri- I'm not against advertising the type of content it is. No, it's interesting though. So the people, this, this went all the way to Congress, like okay. this, this, uh, ratings hearing. Right. And the people that were against Tipper Gore and, uh, some of these other PMRC moms were Frank Zappa, D Snyder of twisted sister. And, um, God, John Denver of all people. I love that. John Good Denver. For John Denver. John Denver. The other two. Obviously. Not a great. Frank Zappa fucking rules. D. Snyder's fine. Like. No, but I'm just saying they're an argument against themselves. Right. Well, Frank Zappa's never going to do himself any favors in court. Like, guy who's, like, on acid constantly and then, like, quasi uh, transvestite. Yeah. I mean, D. Snyder is just a big Which is not, guy. I'm not judging either of them for that, but what I'm saying is you just imagine them presenting themselves to a 1980s audience. Oh, yeah. No, right? no, no. Like, I'm, I'm trying to, well, my, my, uh, my point is them, the argue, like how they look presenting that argument. No, they're going to look and bad. Then, yeah, they're never like, going to who's presenting that argument. No, and John, John Denver, on the other hand. John Denver actually had, I think, the most salient argument. He was just like... Th- oh. We're still going. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, Are we still recording? Going. Yeah. Well, John Denver said, um, you know, I understand wanting to protect people and like make sure kids aren't hearing certain things. But at a certain point, you know, labeling things is a form of censorship. Yeah. You, if you're going to make it so that people can't access my music because of a label you're going to put on it, if it has to be behind a shelf or something like that, that's going to hurt my music being distributed fairly. And I think that was a very good point. It's like, hey, you know, you can't just put just because you know, who are you to say basically like who is a panel to say what is what, Well, which I think is a good argument. And one thing that I assume a lot of these people, uh, I don't think they could have not foreseen it, but, um, probably didn't think was possible is that like, you know, at that point they were like, yeah, we're hiding the transvestite rock and roll and the, the black rhyming music, uh, what they didn't think is that, like, that could easily come back around now. You could easily see a day right now where people are like, oh, no, 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 no. That goes in the back in the Christian rock section. Like, that's the religious music. That's, get that out of the front. Like, we're, you know, we'll sell it, but. Yeah, no, but it's no, no, kind no, of no, already no, happening. No. I mean, it needs a warning that there's a message there. You, you can cancel people a different way where it's like. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Where it's like, duh, baby said some really homophobic things. So yeah, he needs to just his music needs to be censored. He needs to go away. Did he even say anything homophobic? I feel like he just said something like stupid and weird, like a stupid high rant. 
he probably is homophobic, but like it mostly he Most just. Most rappers was, are homophobic. It was yeah. pretty. It was but, pretty homophobic. It was yeah. pretty. It was pretty on the nose. It was. Yeah, there was no there, like. There's no mincing of words. What he was trying to say. I'm like a, I guess I'm mostly questioning whether or not he. Do, uh, he's even coherent enough to understand what. I, no, I mean. he just. He, I think he said something along the lines of like, you know, um, gay people with AIDS. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I understand. What he said was homophobic. It's just like. It was it, at some point something so stupid that I'm like, do we take it seriously? It got him removed from ACL. I know. I'm I'm aware. Yeah, man, his beats still bop though. Oh, dude, the baby's awesome. The yeah, the baby's rules. great. Like I I hate I hate you know hate obviously, but the baby songs kick ass. Yeah, but that, there's a the, difference between like him coming out and being like, we need to fucking repeal gay marriage, and him like clearly being three blunts deep. And saying just something ignorant. barely coherent. For sure. But oh, if, there's a difference between ignorance and hate. Let's but, be honest yeah, with that. There's yeah, a yeah. formula to it, and people will still listen to his music as long as it sounds like a chase scene in Scooby Doo. Yes. I, wow. You're, You're going to have to break this down for me after the show. Do you ever hear that? The, I'd there, break this, it down so somebody right now. tweeted this out, and I've never like seen the baby different or like the same ever again because they're just like every one of the baby songs just sounds like it's a chase scene in Scooby Doo. <laughs> There is an interesting you mean the beats, the yeah. beats, yeah. Because in his biggest song, Rockstar, he talks about killing that guy in Walmart. <laughs> I was about to say he also just killed a guy in Walmart. Right. Like, he did people, do that. People yes. forget, but he no, just murdered a guy. No, like there's a, there's like a five minute thing in Chappelle's stand up about that. But yeah, it's just um, the actual beats to the song just sounds like some Scooby Doo ass shit. Yeah, I I, I support that. Uh, just to kind of and it goes just just to put a nice bow on why Zappa probably wasn't a great. Yeah, witness for this. Because he's just like, come on, man. Um, just let us chill, man. Uh, Zappa went on to propose his suspicion that the hearings were a front for HR 2911, a proposed blank tape tax. This is Zappa quote. The major record labels need to have HR 2911 whiz through a few committees before anybody smells a rat. One of them is chaired by Senator Thurman. Is it a coincidence that Mr. Thurman is affiliated with PMRC? Because it seems like a couple of blowjobs here and there, and bingo, you got a hearing now with me at it. He said that in Congress. Good Lord. Yeah, so he's not helping himself. He's, a, he's one of their top three. He was the main three, Zappa, yeah. John Denver, and T. Snyder. I would have just tried out Denver, really. You could have went with Denver. Anyone else. I mean, even what D. Snyder said. D. Snyder was actually interesting because they're talking about a song called Under the Knife. I, I, I don't know what D. Snyder said, but I'm just my thing with him is like, his appearance at the time. Again, sure. Is just and, not... and it's like, you're talking about metal as it's coming up at this point. Right. Like it's, you, you, it's mainly hair metal, but uh, there's a song he was talking about called under, under the knife where it's about his friend going through surgery. And they're like, it's about sadomasochism. It's right. like, well, what the fuck ever? Who cares? But like, it's, this is what it's about. Right. He's talking about that. They did have 15 songs that were the filthy 15 that were like the worst offenders. Um, uh, on those two, uh, one was Prince's Darling Nikki because it's about masturbation. Okay. Then, like, obviously there's some that I'm like, I could see that. One is uh, Animal Fuck Like a Beast by Wasp. Fair uh, enough, sure. Uh, uh, but then you get, like, We're Not Gonna Take It by Twisted Sister. Right. That's just, what is, that's anti. That's all that is. Right. We're not gonna take it anymore. That, I think, them is, they're just mad that Twisted Sister kind of dresses up like chicks. Yeah. And again, when I say, like, D. Snyder's not a great character witness or whatever, it's not, it's nothing to do with what I think of how he, he him and the band presents themselves. Yeah. It's how, like... Again, you're making a case, right? Right. You're making a case. Cindy Lauper is on this list, dude. Like, even then, by by the way, even back then, Cindy Lauper's appearance, the pink hair and stuff like that. Oh yeah, no, her her owning her own sexuality is definitely pushing an envelope. Right. Yeah. And again, this is not me judging that or thinking that's wrong. I don't at all, and I think you should do whatever you want. But at some point, you have to balance um, signaling and and how you want to be with. Uh, pragmatism and making a fucking having to actually make your case before the people you're trying to convince of something. Sure. I, you know, I think the argument is that do you need to rate, is it the job of the government to rate music? And I think, you know, there's an argument. I think the, the, what they came up with that little thing, the right. sticker, that's fine. Right. That's fine. Hey, just a heads up. There's some stuff in here. Yeah. We don't have to like dive into it and have like a MPAA rating system for everything because like, I mean, it's an argument that's going to be later on too with like you were mentioning the YouTube stuff. How do you moderate all that content that exists now? That's way harder now than it was then. Right. Like, 
don't know, man. It, it's got to be tough. You have a kid coming, uh, not coming, but you have a kid that's going to be of age to start looking at YouTube shit. How are you going to monitor that? Ugh, fuck, man. I yeah. don't want to fucking do. I don't even want to fucking think about it. Anyway, um, yeah. So that was all the stuff that was going on in the eighties, kind of into the nineties, and then uh, nineteen ninety seven is when the first successful MP three player is created, and we won't go into that because then we start getting into Napster, and that's before we go. That's Napster weird. was tight. Did you guys actually ever use Napster? I never no. used Napster. I did. I was. I was. Would it I'm take old, you twelve hours to burn a CD? I'm old enough for the nap. No, man. It actually didn't take that long. It just depended on how good your internet was. Essentially, like if you had good internet, you that blue bar, that little, it went fairly fast. I mean, not like didn't zoom across unless unless you were like rich, basically. Yeah, unless you had like cable internet before. Right, right, there. right. But I, I mean, a, no. Uh, LimeWire and FrostWire guy. Uh, Bear Share. LimeWire. Pirate Bay. I was Napster, then Kazaa. Kazaa was, had the spyware in it. Yeah. It all had spyware. But the OG <laughs> Napster, yeah, I, I used that for sure. I was, I was there for that. And that's another funny one. The bands that were not a big fan of Napster were who? Metallica. Right. Rage Against the Machine. Like, Rage Against the Machine is the biggest fucking lie of a band name I have ever heard in my life. Oh, I love Rage. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, the fact they were like, this is hurting our profits. They haven't like, raged against the machine in 25 years. This is true. But yeah, no, I, I would go more into the Napster saga shit, but that's honestly its own. That could be its own episode. Two years. I think we have a 20 year rule. When was Napster? Napster was in the 90s. So you could talk about it a little bit. Well, no. I think the saga. I didn't write anything. So that's fine. 99. Yeah. No, no, it we're started at, in 99. Yeah, it's, it's definitely pre 9 11. I remember using it in like seventh, eighth grade. Damn, it only lasted for two years. Oh, they got sued to a fucking oblivion. Uh, yeah. Flew directly into the sun. So its initial release was June 1st, 1999, and its final release was September 3rd, 2002. It existed for like two years. Yeah. That's insane. I didn't realize it was that. Like, I. I remember it was so hot, and like I figured it had been around longer. No, it's just it's just burned bright. That's awesome. It's burned bright. No. And honestly, like I remember it being such a fucking thing, where it was like all of a sudden everyone I knew, because well, I mean, like CDs were expensive, right? Especially if you're a kid, like ten, eleven dollars in, oh, in the late nineties. Oh my god, do you remember like Columbia House Music Club? Yeah, you had to pay like it was like thirty bucks a month. You got like five CDs, right? And that was like a deal. Yeah. Yeah. No, like it was, it was legitimately expensive to buy CDs. Then all of a sudden, at at one moment, everyone in the world between like fifth grade and thirty years old was like, "Wait, I can just have it all. We can get all of this music for free." Yeah. No, it's like it was like you remember when Netflix first came out and it had everything on it. Yeah. It was like that. Yeah. I miss that. People also forget that you could take. A store-bought CD. People don't remember this. You probably still do, but I, I don't. Who, no one has CD drives anymore. And rip it straight to your computer. Yeah, you could download that CD to your computer. That's what CDs became once MP3s became a thing. It's like, oh, this is just a thing for me to put this onto my MP3 player now. Right. Yeah. Which made it pretty obvious that you didn't need CDs yeah. anymore. I mean, it was. Yeah. I remember it was just like one day. It's like, hey, did you know all music is free now? Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's history music. Who's Hitler? Napster. Napster is Hitler? Mm -hmm. I was going to say Tipper Gore. Yeah, I think Tipper Gore is Hitler here. Yeah. I guess you don't support artists. That's fine. I support artists. Mm, I don't support us. I don't either. Yeah. People listen to us for free? Not after this. Yeah, I'd say either Tipper Gore or... Oh, you think uh, this episode's the one that does this in? I'd I'd be fine with that, honestly. It's okay. Uh, My voice hurts. Is Tipper Gore the Hitler over uh, Edison? Um, Ooh, yes, Tipper yeah, yeah. Gore is for sure. Edison was just a—he was just a capitalist. He, he was just I trying agree. To I find agree. his way through this. Edison world. was an, a good American. Yeah, he. Tipper Gore is a, is the Hitler. Edison, honestly, he's just misunderstood. I agree. I agree. Uh, virtue signaling, bitch. I guess. I guess, yeah. guess ambitions mm-hmm. sin now. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, you wanted to get show off that shirt. Top. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. We, don't, we don't get this shirt without Edison. Nope. It's true. Thanks, Tommy. Um, yeah, okay, so Hitler was Tipper Gore. What did we learn? Um, <sighs> Nothing. Okay. 
I'm taking a beat. Nice. He's letting it land. Let, land the plane. Let it land. Land the plane. That's a callback. This was definitely uh, a huge argument. We should just you should cut the argument we had while it was recording and then put it at the end of the episode. You letting that land? You letting that comment land too? Great. Uh, what I learned. This is fun, guys. Yeah. I'm really enjoying this episode. What I learned today was that I don't know people being giant boners about everything. Art is nothing new. Yeah. I mean, that's not even a music thing. Yeah, no, it's really not. Um, I learned that, uh, I think my favorite thing that I learned was that some guy really thought people would be able to read sounds. Right. That was the funniest thing. He was like, that oh, is we were fucking hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah like, I can say it. Yeah. yeah. I know it. I know what it's supposed to sound like. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Just um, walk up to a blind person, shout a color at them, say you're welcome. What about your day? Uh, if you want merch for our show, which who would, right, Dan? Who would want our merch? But if you do, you can go to softcorehistory.com. We have merch there. We have the Topsy the Electric Elephant t-shirt that Dan is currently wearing. We have the Two Irish to Die tee. We might have some other stuff. I don't know if we're going to have Christmas stuff, Rob. I'm sorry. It's too soon. <sighs> Damn it. Yeah, it's print on demand, bro. Um, but Christmas yeah, if you want your Christmas shirt by February. Order now. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, if you didn't see our Instagram today, we learned a fun thing, and that was that uh, St. Nicholas, Santa Claus. Oh, yeah. Patron saint of prostitutes. Yes. Also, go on our Instagram, and you can see my weird mammoth bone collection. Yeah. You can yeah. see that, too, from last week. Yeah. Still don't know why I have that. Mammoth but... Japanese demon Dude, we bone. should, go, we should um, go to Antiques Collector and get those appraised for content. Okay. Sounds good. See and see if they shame me for it because there's like a there's actually what if we some, walk in and they're like oh my god these are worth ten thousand dollars each but you should be in jail for owning them yeah like I, there is like a moral dilemma on that kind of ivory apparently on the mammoth ivory apparently they weren't killed for it right that's that was my argument they're but extinct some, it's like yeah. they don't exist anymore look humans did slaughter them into extinction on every continent but my family didn't right yeah so when I don't you. Know, was not me. Do you know mammoths were still alive when the pyramids were built? That that sounds fine. That yeah. doesn't. That's not one of those weird ones to me. It's true. The one that's weird to me is like the oh, it's been like it's like Cleopatra was closer to the moon landing than the pyramids being built right, or right, something right. like that. Yeah, yeah, that one's always weird. Anyway, true. check out softcorehistory.com. Listen to the show. Obviously, you're listening right now. Uh, subscribe. Get your friends to subscribe. Subscribe your friends. Get your dog to listen. Review, Play give us five stars. Dog. Yeah. Um, honestly, that's it for me. I'm Jake Goldman. For Rob Fox and Dan Regester, I'm Jake Goldman. I mean, and you got soft serve. <laughs> Dude, I'm having such a hard time today. <laughs>